So if you've ever felt overwhelmed by the endless number of credit card options out there, then this video is perfect for you. By simply watching this video, I'm going to be distilling for you all of the knowledge that I've built up opening and closing credit cards for the past 10 years. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly which cards to sign up for and how to thoroughly maximize its value in order to provide you with the most benefits. Hi friends, for those who are new here, my name is Raymond and on this channel, we talk about maximizing value from my credit card. So consider subscribing to the channel. Now to help break up this video, I'm gonna be breaking it down into five different tiers. The first tier is gonna be the baby tier. So the little baby emoji that you see over there. We then move up to the beginner credit cards and then move up to the mid tier cards. And then after that, we're gonna to go to the platinum tier and that's where things start to get really fun. And then last, we go to the God tier cards. So within the baby tier, there is really only one type of credit card and that's student credit cards. Now a student credit card is designed specifically for students. So they tend to have lower spending limits and lower interest rates and also lower annual fees as well. For anyone that's new to credit cards, it can be difficult to get your first credit card, especially if you have no pre-existing credit history or a stable stream of employment income coming in. These applicants might seem too risky to some credit cards card companies, but that's where student credit cards come into the picture. Card providers who offer student credit cards are typically much more lenient when it comes to the eligibility requirements of actually signing up and getting approved for a credit card. This allows students who are unable to demonstrate their credit worthiness a chance to apply for a credit card and get approved. With a low or no annual fee, student credit cards tend to be pretty simple. That means no fancy features, no reward programs, and no sign up bonuses. But this can be extremely beneficial, especially if you're a student and this is your first credit card, it can allow you to focus on only spending on what you need and then paying back all of your repayments before you get charged any interest. In this tier, there are only three cards that I would really consider. We have the American Express low rate credit card, the Westpac low rate credit card, and the ANZ first credit card. Now, a question I often get asked is what if I'm an international student or on a student visa? Can I still apply for these credit cards? Now the answer is yes and no. Each credit card company has their own terms and conditions in terms of the eligibility requirements. The American Express, for example, you can't apply if you have a student visa. However, on the other hand, the Westpac low rate credit card, you can apply if you are on a student visa, as long as your visa doesn't expire within 12 months. So moving on to the next tier, which is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. Now, I never got a student credit card when I first started. I pretty much just jumped straight into applying for a beginner credit card so don't feel like you need to start off with a student credit card and then work your way up to one of these. So beginner credit cards are still really easy to use. They'll typically come with a low or a zero dollar annual fee and if you sign up for the right card it will also come with a nice little sign up bonus as well either in the form of a cashback or some reward points depending on which card you sign up for. These beginner credit cards that Arba highlighted are great because they offer some really generous sign up bonuses for their new customers. So for example, the St. George Vertigo credit card, you can get up to 10% cash back on all of your grocery at major supermarkets capped at $400 per year. 10% cash back on all of your groceries is nuts. And I can guarantee you that no other card on the market right now is providing you with that same benefit. Another credit card that makes a strong argument for it being on the mid tier list is the Westpac Altitude Rewards Platinum credit card. Just by the name, you might think it is a mid tier card, but I've got it down here on the beginner tier because if you are a Westpac customer, they're gonna weigh the entire annual fee down to $0 for your first year. And on top of that, as a sign up bonus, you also receive 100,000 altitude reward points, which can be redeemed for at least $500 worth of gift cards after spending three thousand dollars in three months. Now, before we move on to the next tier, I wanted to quickly talk about how you can always ensure that you're gonna be approved for your next credit card application. Now, back in the day, a lot of credit card companies would actually state the minimum income requirement that you would need to actually apply for that credit card.
card. But a trend that I've been noticing more and more is that credit card companies are no longer putting this minimum income requirement in their credit card applications. And instead they make a more general statement around having a verifiable Australian taxable income. My hypothesis, which by the way, hasn't been proven at all. So this is just my speculation is that credit card companies are no longer putting as much emphasis on your actual income anymore when it comes to credit card applications. Now, don't get me wrong. There still is a requirement to earn an income. However, you no longer have to be earning $90,000 or $100,000 just to apply for some of these mid-tier or platinum credit cards, which is great because now more people can gain access to these credit cards without having a high income. Now, what I think is increasingly becoming more important as to whether or not you're going to be approved for a credit card is your actual credit score. Now, credit scores in Australia were probably non-existent five to six years ago, but over the past one to two or three years, you've definitely heard about it being talked a lot more. I think that credit card companies are going to increasingly look at your credit score to see whether or not they're going to approve you for your credit card application. And I say this because pretty much on every single credit card application, there's going to be some reference on the landing page talking about you having a good credit score and having no bad debts or default payments. So I think it's very important to take note of your credit score and make conscious efforts to improve your credit score, especially if it isn't that good right now. Now within the mid tier, there are a few things that you need to know. Firstly, these credit cards are going to come with an annual fee. Number two, they are not going to be as easy to apply for as a beginner credit card. And number three is you do need to know the ins and outs in order to maximize the value from these cards. The majority of the mid tier cards are gonna give you some form of benefit within the travel category. And it's also within this category where you're gonna receive the highest sign up bonuses as well. Take as an example, the ANZ Frequent Flyer Black Card, which as a sign up bonus, you'll receive 90,000 Qantas Frequent Flyer points and also $100 cash back when you spend $5,000 in your first 90 days. Or as another example, the Westpac Altitude Black Credit Card, which provides a signup bonus of 140,000 Altitude Reward Points, which is redeemable for $590 worth of gift cards alone. Now, when you get a credit card with an annual fee in this category, you'll typically find that it does come with extended benefits, such as warranty insurance, purchase protection insurance, and also complimentary domestic and international travel insurance as well. Overall, the benefits of mid-tier cards can add significant value to the cardholder if they know how to properly maximize all of its perks. It is worth noting though, that as you enter the world of credit cards with annual fees, you need to consider whether or not that credit card is worth it based on your own lifestyle. So for example, if you're someone who doesn't really travel that often and don't plan to accumulate Qantas frequent flyer points, then the ANZ frequent flyer black card probably isn't for you and you should probably look at a credit card that provides instead a cash back on all of your purchases. In this tier, some of these cards can also be classified as keeper cards. So for example, the American Express Explorer credit card is one that I've had in my wallet for several years now. Yes, it does have a high annual fee of $395 per year, but it also comes with a travel credit each year of $400 that I can use towards any domestic or international travel. So that one benefit alone pretty much pays for the annual fee. And on top of that, there's a lot of extended perks and benefits that come along with the card as well. But at the bare minimum, just by booking your $400 worth of travel credit, you'll at least be breaking even. All right, so moving on to the premium tier, and this is where things start to get a little bit spicy. Premium cards are where you really need to commit and really learn the ins and outs of all of these credit cards in order to maximize the benefits that come along with it. Otherwise, you can actually start to lose money because the annual fees here are extremely high. The American Express Platinum card has an annual fee of $1,450 each year. The City Prestige card has an annual fee of $700 and the Qantas Titanium card has an annual fee of $1,200. If you had gotten any one of these credit cards and didn't use up all of the benefits, you're 
you're pretty much wasting thousands of dollars down the drain and you're probably just better off signing up for one of the beginner credit cards. But if you know how to probably use these credit cards, especially when it comes to travel, that's when you begin to reap all the benefits. Whether it's getting airport lounge access or booking accommodation and getting a free room upgrade and then being able to check in early and then check out early as well, it's these benefits that really start to add up but also are hard to quantify. In Australia, I would say that the American Express Platinum card is considered end game when it comes to credit cards. It's just stacked full of benefits that not only includes a lot of channel benefits, but also benefits in the dining category and also the shopping category as well. But for a lot of people, $1,450 is a steep price to pay. And if you're in that category, then consider the City Prestige card as a good alternative. I consider Citibank credit cards to be some of the most underrated credit cards on the market today. Sure, it doesn't have as many benefits as American Express, but for the price point that you're getting in at, it's providing you with really good value for money. Right now, as a sign-up bonus, you can get up to 300,000 Citibank reward points, which is equivalent to $1,500 in cashback after spending $10,000 in 90 days. And on top of the sign-up bonus, they're actually slashing the annual fee down to $350 for the first year as well, which puts this card at the price point at the same as some of the mid-tier cards that we discussed earlier, which pretty much just makes it a no-brainer and why I think Citibank credit cards are some of the most underrated credit cards on the market today. So the last tier on this list is what I call the God tier cards. And there really is only one card on the market in Australia that goes into this category. And that's the American Express Centurion card or otherwise known as the Black Card. Now this credit card comes with the most exclusive benefits and perks that you could ever think of. But frankly, for most people like you and I, we're probably never going to be able to get our hands on this credit card. Because in order to obtain this credit card, you actually need to be invited by American Express themselves. And on top of that, it comes with an extremely hefty joining fee of $5,000 and a recurring annual fee of $6,500 per year. So yeah, on your first year, you're pretty much paying $12,000 to get your hands on this card. Now, American Express doesn't actually publicly talk about this card, nor does it publish the criteria it uses in sending out these invitations. However, I did some digging and in general, you need to have held an Amex Platinum card for at least six to 12 months to be eligible. And on a yearly basis, you need to spend at least $100,000 with them. Now, to be clear, most people will not be eligible for this credit card. It is an exclusive and expensive product and American Express really only sends out invitations to a small select number of people. Now, when it comes to things in general, I think that people naturally gravitate towards things that are flashy and expensive. However, when it comes to credit cards, I think that the mid tier or platinum tier is where the sweet spot really is depending on your own personal lifestyle. This is where you're still gonna get really great sign up bonuses and travel benefits as well for a relatively low annual fee in comparison. If you stay within that range and just continue to churn credit cards, you'll quickly be able to accumulate a large number of reward points that will enable you to redeem even more travel benefits. And that right there is going to be the end of my credit card tier list. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found anything useful at all, make sure to hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the content for more future credit card content in the future. And as always guys, I will see you guys in the next video.